Okay, so let's work on the solution for example 4.7 from the OpenStax textbook. Let's read through the problem. During a fireworks display, a shell is shot into the air with an initial speed of 70 meters per second at an angle of 75 degrees above the horizontal. The fuse is timed to ignite the shell just as it reaches its highest point above the ground. Okay, so in part A we calculate the height at which the shell explodes. In part B we calculate how much time passes between the launch of the shell and the explosion. In part C, we find what is a horizontal displacement of the shell when it explodes. And finally, in part D, we calculate what is the total displacement from the point of launch to the highest point. Okay, so this, we've got four questions to answer, um, but let's not even think about what questions we have to answer. Let's first just do what we do for any physics problem and set up the problem. We write down our knowns, or we write down our unknowns, we draw a picture, we define coordinate systems. We have to do all of that first, and then we can start thinking about solving the problem. Okay, so I'll start by defining a coordinate system. We're launching something from the ground. I'm just going to draw our typical XY coordinate system. And let's just say from the origin, we're launching a projectile with some initial velocity. Okay, so this is what I'll call V naught, our initial velocity. And so that's our kind of picture what's going on in this problem. And then we see that that projectile, that firework that we're launching off with some initial velocity is going to fly up into the air. It's going to reach some highest point, And instead of falling back down, it's going to you know, explode at its highest point. Okay, so that's one of the things we need to figure out is what is that highest point. But okay, that's our kind of picture of what's going on here. We now need to think about what are our knowns and unknowns. Okay, so some of the knowns are explicitly given to us in the problem. They tell us the initial speed is 70 meters per second, and they tell us the angle the projectile was launched at is 75 degrees. All right, so those are two key pieces of information that I should write down. That is, that my initial velocity, my initial speed, I should say, is equal to 70 meters per second, right? And the angle at which that firework is shot off, I'll call that theta, is equal to 75 degrees. Okay, so this is the angle that I'm calling theta, and that angle is equal to 75 degrees, and we know the speed that we're shooting this projectile with. Okay, um, before I write down any other knowns, I'm actually going to do one additional step here, and this is something we should always do, in that whenever we're doing a two-dimensional, three-dimensional problem, we generally want to break any vector down into components and split it up in, instead of this complicated problem where something is moving both in X and in Y, we can split it up into a problem of motion in the X direction and a separate problem of motion in the Y direction. All right, so in order to do that, I need to figure out the X component of my velocity, my initial velocity, and the Y component of my initial velocity. Right, and I can look here at the image I've drawn and kind of draw in that this is my x component of my initial velocity and this is my x y component of my initial velocity right and it's a good idea for me to figure those out before I even start solving the problem I'm going to need to know those numbers later definitely right because we know that gravity is only working in the y direction the velocity in y is going to behave differently than the velocity in x because of that reason okay so Therefore, let's figure out, using this triangle, these components. All right, the x component of my initial velocity, or my velocity at time zero, is adjacent to that angle theta. So I could find it by doing uh, v naught cosine of theta. Okay, so that's equal to 70 meters per second times cosine of 75 degrees. And when I plug in, I find that is 18.1 meters per second. Okay. And for my y component of my velocity at time equals zero, that is v naught sine of theta. Again, because that uh, component is opposite of my angle, so I use sine from SOHCAHTOA. So this is going to be equal to 70 meters per second times sine of 75 degrees. And when I plug in, I find that to be 67.6 .6 meters per second. Okay. So we have more knowns now, right? We know the, both the x component and the y component of the initial velocity, and we arrived at that from the initial speed and the initial angle. Okay, so those are knowns which are explicitly given to us. 
Let me label these as our knowns. But and that's all they told us in terms of initial and in terms of you know numbers and and information about the problem. Um, but we can bring in some other knowledge. First of all, um, I can recognize here that. Um, I define a coordinate system and I defined our initial position to be the origin and therefore it must be true that the initial position in X is equal to zero and the initial position in Y is equal to zero. All right, so those are two additional knowns. And finally, we can bring in our conceptual understanding of physics on Earth and physics on Earth behaves in a certain way. In fact, we know that gravity is going to act on this object. Once this firework is in the air and nothing is touching it, the only thing that is affecting it is the force of gravity. Right? We're going to ignore air resistance or drag. So um, if only gravity is effect affecting it, we know that the moment it, it is in the air, it must have acceleration in the y direction. And we defined plus y to be up, so the acceleration must be equal to minus g in the y direction. And we also know that in the x direction, nothing is affecting this projectile. Nothing is going to make it speed up or slow down, so the acceleration in x must be equal to zero. Okay, so those are some more knowns which we have brought to this problem using our own conceptual knowledge. Okay, so we've, we've written down, we've pretty much fully set up the problem here um, in terms of writing down everything and drawing the picture and all of that. Um, we can now just have one quick thought about what, from our current knowledge, what concepts can we use to solve um, any questions about this problem. And the principal thing we should notice at this point is that we have constant acceleration. Right? Both our acceleration in x and our acceleration in y are constants. Right? They're not depending on time. What that means is that we can bring into play our constant acceleration equations. Both in x and in y, those equations will apply. And therefore, this is kind of a good hint that we should use those equations to solve this problem. Right? So if you're stuck on how do you solve this problem, think about what concepts apply. And this constant acceleration is kind of the key clue. Right, so this is our, our principal concept here, that we have constant acceleration. Okay, so we've now <laughs> done enough that we can actually start s trying to solve the problem. Okay, so in part A, we want to figure out the height at which the shell explodes. Right, that's what they're asking for the height at which the shell explodes. And in the previous sentence, it told us that the shell expo explodes at its highest point. Okay, So basically, this is asking, what is the highest point reached by this firework? OK, so um, question A, what, are they, what do they want us to find? They want us to find, I'll call it y max, right? the maximum value of our y coordinate that this projectile will reach. Right? So that's what they want us to find. Um, in order to figure that out, we actually have to bring in one more piece of conceptual knowledge and um, write down one more known. Right? And that piece of conceptual knowledge is that at the highest point, any object shot into the air is at the highest point is going to have zero component of velocity in the y direction at that moment. Right? We know that this projectile was shot off, if I plotted its velocity in the y direction as a function of time, it was shot off with some large v not y, right? It initially had, we found it already, 67.6 .6 meters per second of velocity in the y direction um, when we first shot this projectile off. As it rises up in the air, it's accelerating with acceleration equal to minus g, right? So it's slowing down on the way up, so its velocity is linearly decreasing, right? If we have constant acceleration, our velocity is going to be linearly changing. Um, and so if it's linearly decreasing, at some point, it's going to reach zero, right? When does that happen? Well, th the projectile is slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, slowing down. Still has positive velocity, still moving up, but it's slowing down until it finally reaches the highest point. It momentarily has zero velocity until it starts falling. And there, then it has negative velocity, negative velocity, negative velocity. And it's speeding up, speeding up, speeding up in the negative direction, right? So at that point, that is the maximum height. And therefore, we can bring in one piece of addi additional information that at y max, let me write that a little bit more clearly, at y max, the y component of our velocity is equal to zero. Right? So this is one more known. 
that we can use to solve the problem. And this is a necessary known to solve this particular problem. All right, so we have to bring in that conceptual knowledge. So okay, now we have everything we need to actually look at our equations and figure out which equation is relevant. Again, we, we think about our key concept. Our key concept is that acceleration is constant. That leads us to our four constant acceleration equations. Of those four constant acceleration equations, we try to find one equation that has one unknown and everything else is known. Right, so in this, we want to find a, an equation that has y in it, because we want to be able to solve for y max. But we want everything else to be known. Right? And we don't know anything about the time at this point, so we have to ignore all the equations that involve time. So the equation that looks best to me is this one. v squared is equal to v naught squared plus 2a delta y. All right, so with this equation, uh, let me write this just a little bit differently. I'm going to just expand out delta y as y minus y naught. Right? And just to be clear, this is the y component of my initial velocity, and this is the y component of my velocity at some later time. All right, so in this formula, we know that our initial velocity in y is equal to 67.6. We know our final velocity in y is equal to 0. We know our acceleration is equal to minus g. We know our initial value position in y is equal to 0 because we defined it that way. So our only really unknown is y. So we can solve this for y max. Right? If we plug in the velocity at that max height, we can solve for that um, max height. Okay, So let's do that. Again, this is equal to 0, and this is equal to 0, right, because of our key known right here. So that enables us to then just solve this as being y is equal to v naught y squared over 2, uh, negative 2a, excuse me. And I can plug in minus g here, so this becomes v naught y squared over 2g. And there we can plug in, right, y is equal to um 67.6 meters per second right we have to be sure that we're using the y component of our velocity here and not our actual velocity right we're, we're sh shooting this projectile off with 70 meters per second of speed but that's not what it determines how high it goes right what determines how high it goes is the y component of the velocity right because this is motion in y we're splitting this into two problems one in y one in x right so we have the y component of velocity initially squared divided by 2 times 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay. So when we solve this, we can see that um, our seconds squared cancels out. We've got meters squared in the numerator and meters in the denominator. So those will give us just meters. So that's good. We want an answer in meters. And we plug in, we get 233 meters. Okay. So that's our answer for the max height reached by this projectile. So that's our answer to part A. Okay, so that was a little bit of work, um, but it wasn't too bad. Okay, um, let's now look at part B. How much time passes between the launch of the shell and the explosion? All right, so this is basically figuring out how much time does it take this projectile to get to its maximum height, because right, it's exploding at its maximum height. So for part B, we have all the setup already. We, uh, we have all the knowns. Um, and so, in fact, we have more knowns now because we now know y max. Um, so we can again look at our constant acceleration equations and find one that has everything known except for our one unknown, which is the time. Okay, so, uh, and I have to go to a new page here. So for part b, we want to find the time that we reach at y max. And I can look at my constant acceleration equations and I see this is 1, v is equal to v naught y plus acceleration in y times time. And right, we know our acceleration in y is minus g. We know our initial velocity in y. We know our final velocity in y is equal to 0 because we're at our maximum height. And so we can find our one unknown here is a time which we can solve for. Right, so I plug in. Um, well, let me just, this is 0, so this becomes 0 is equal to v naught y minus gt. And then I can solve symbolically, t is equal to v naught y over g. And then I can just plug in. This becomes t is equal to, what was v naught y? v naught y was 
meters per second divided by 9.8 meters per second squared. And when I plug in there, I get time equal to uh, 6.90 seconds. Okay, so that's great. That's our answer to part B. Okay, now we go ahead to part C. What is the horizontal displacement of the shell when it explodes? Okay, so let's just kind of mark off what we've already figured out here. We've already figured out the max height, right, which is some value on our y-axis. We figured out how much time it takes to get to that max height. Now they want us to know the y, the, I'm sorry, the x position, right, the horizontal distance when it explodes, right? They want us to find this value. What is its position in X when it explodes? What is its displacement in the horizontal direction? Okay, so now we've done so far everything in the Y direction, but now we need to do something in the X direction. So it's a separate problem, right? The motion in X is different, fundamentally different, because the acceleration in X is different. Right? The acceleration in X is zero. That's going to lead to lead to a different type of motion. Okay, so for part... C, we want to find delta x, right, the displacement in x. And so this allows us to bring in, again, one more key piece of information, that is acceleration x is equal to zero. So that's a constant. And so we can use our constant acceleration equations. And in fact, for example, this one, x is equal to x naught plus v naught x t plus one half acceleration in x t squared, and if acceleration in x is equal to zero, all right, and we define our initial position in x to be zero, if I want to find my final position in x, all I have to know is my velocity in x times the amount of time that that projectile was in the air for, which we already solved for. Right? We figured out how long that projectile was in the air before it exploded. Right? So we can use that information that we gained from talking about motion in y to now answer something that we have to do in x. Okay, and so this is always going to be the case with this type of problem. What determines how long the projectile is in the air for is the motion in y, but if we want to figure out how far it's gone in x during that time, we can use just the fact that we have constant velocity in x, moving at some speed for some amount of time, we can figure out how far we've traveled. All right. So we know our x component of velocity initially, that was what we had found earlier, 18.1 meters per second, right? That's this component of our velocity here. So we have 18.1 meters per second times the time that's in the air for, which is what we found in part B. So that's 6.90 seconds. And so that gives us, let's see, 125 meters. Okay, so that's our answer to part C. And, okay, and then finally in part D, they want to know what is the total displacement from the point of launch to the highest point. Okay, so we know the initial position is zero, zero. If we can write down our final position, write down that position vector, displacement in two dimensions is just my final displacement vector, I'm sorry, my final position vector minus my initial position vector. All right, that's our definition of displacement in two dimensions. All right, in two dimensions, delta R are our displacement vector is equal to a position vector that points to our location at our final time minus a position vector which points to our location at our initial time. Okay, At our initial time, we're just at 0 i hat plus 0 j hat. Right? We're at the origin. At our final time, we've already figured out our location. Our x value is 125 meters. And our y value we found on the previous page was 233 meters. J hat. All right, so we know our exact position at that time. Um, so I can figure out our displacement vector. Again, that's simple because our R1 is just zero, zero. So delta R is just 125 meters. I hat plus 233 meters j hat. So that's our exact displacement vector, um, but they don't want to know that. They want to know the displacement. They're asking the total displacement, so it sounds like they want to know um, perhaps just the, the vector, but also maybe the magnitude, how far away 
is that shell from where it was launched. All right, to figure that out, we can always calculate the magnitude of our displacement. Right, this is just going to be the x component squared plus the y component squared and take the square root of that. So that gives us 264 meters. Right. We may also want to know the angle. Right, so if I can get to, there we go. So if this is where the projectile explodes and we just figured out this distance, we just figured out that distance is equal to um, 264 meters. We may also want to know this angle. I'll call it angle phi. And to figure that out, I can do phi is equal to tan inverse of the y component over the x component. So this is delta y over delta x, right? Where this is delta y, this is delta x. Right, to see why that is, again, this is delta y, this is opposite that angle, this is delta x. It's adjacent to that angle. Okay, so to figure out that angle phi, I can plug into that equation and find that that angle is equal to 61.8 degrees. Okay, I think we are finally done with this problem. Um, so let me know if you have any questions on it.